Greetings, I'm Joe Fab. I'm a documentary filmmaker and advocate for medical aid in dying. My recent film, When My Time Comes, is an exploration of that subject, and it led to my having the opportunity to speak to a number of physicians who assist their terminally ill patients at the end of life. I'm delighted to introduce you to one such physician today, Dr. Deborah Pasik. She's based in New Jersey, which in 2019 became the ninth state to authorize medical aid in dying. Dr. Pasik began her career as a rheumatologist. After over three decades focusing on that specialty, she decided to make a change to caring for and advocating for patients seeking medical aid in dying. In my own personal experience, 33 years of being a physician, I have witnessed many deaths. I have witnessed patients in unbearable pain, and many, many, many patients uh, that I've taken care of have really begged for me to help them end their lives. This led me to believe that there had to be a better way for these patients to be able to end their lives in a peaceful and dignified manner. Both the public and the physicians in this country uh, overwhelmingly support medical aid and dying in a clear majority. There have been 25 plus years experience in this country with medical aid and dying, uh, with the, the oldest state, the oldest law being in Oregon. And there has not been one single case of abuse of this law. There has have been no abuse of the elderly. There has been no abuse or coercion of the disabled. And this is the primary uh, opposition case, apart from religious opposition, which just doesn't hold any water in the practical experience of this law in this country. Something that Dr. Pasik emphasized over and over in our interview was the critical importance of education. When New Jersey's Medical Aid in Dying for the Terminally Ill Act was passed by the state legislature in 2019, she saw the shortage of available information sources for patients. She and four of her colleagues decided to do something about that. We just jumped right in and um, created the website and the organization. So it's called New Jersey Death with Dignity. And when you log on to that website, you will find pretty much anything you want to know about medical aid and dying in this state. It's for the community, it's for physicians, it's for institutions, and there's even a section where we will help you find your care. So if I had one goal for my organization, one, one goal to, to prioritize, apart from generally educating the public and, and providing care, it would be to, um, to give forward to the current medical school community so that medical aid and dying becomes part of the normal conversations that physicians have with their patients. In order to normalize medical aid and dying in the, in, the, in the practice of medicine, number one, physicians need to know what it is. Number two, physicians need to be comfortable including medical aid and dying as part of the um, just day-to-day -day routine conversation when end-of-life options come up. But that topic doesn't come up. It's not, it's not normalized in the conversations that physicians have with their patients when discussing, when having the routine end-of-life end option conversation. And I truly feel that it, it, it needs to be. Even though 60 plus percent of physicians support aid and dying, a much, much, much smaller percentage actually want to prescribe aid and dying medications. And this is, this is what I found when I, when I first started uh, prescribing, is that I would be contacted by patients that had reached out to obviously their own physician and then upwards of 40 other physicians in the state, unable to find one willing to prescribe. This, the reality of the situation 
here in New Jersey, which I can even speak really for New Jersey, is that patients that want to explore medical aid and dying need help in finding care. They can't just find it with their primary care physician or with their oncologist or with their neurologist. And in order to normalize it, so to speak, medical aid and dying really needs to be part of medical education, starting at the, at the medical school level and perhaps being part of a palliative care program that you know, teaches physicians how to specialize in palliative care, those palliative care physicians really should be totally educated on aid and dying. And it doesn't matter if that physician is against it or not. The physicians learn about abortion in medical school. They don't necessarily have to agree with it, and they don't necessarily have to provide it, but they know about it. And I, I kind of make that parallel with aid and dying. It's a very emotionally charged subject with a lot of opinions, but it still should be part of the conversation because it is it is part of a, a normal option of, of end of life.